Hello, you know me by now, I'm Peter Weygang, the Secretary of the Citizens for Direct Democracy. In the past we did a video on the 2017 budget and I pointed out a large number of really serious errors and simple arithmetic errors. I'm now going to look at the two budgets 2018 compared to 2017 so we can get some idea of where the money is changing and how things are changing, generally increasing year by year. You will be horrified and your eyes, I hope, will be rolling in your head. In previous slideshows, I've discussed the budgets for the city of Kuwata Lakes and we have always found some serious errors in them. In this set, I'm going to look at the 2018 budget and also the 2017 budget and I am going to compare the two and we will find some real whoppers that will truly surprise you and make you go into despair like I do. Okay so this is the 2018 budget and in the 2018 budget you get the figures from the 2017 budget that's so that you can do a comparison. Similarly, in the 2017 budget, you get the 2016 budget. So you have three years represented in two reports. So let's look at what happens, what changes there have been over the year. The first thing I noticed that jumped out at me was this. When we start to list the number of people in various departments, we look at the clerk's department, this is the new clerk, and suddenly, she has 10 more people working for her. In 2017, 9.6. I'm not quite sure what 0.6 of a person is. But anyhow, she has 10 more of them. So I decided to carry out my investigation and go a bit further. Now, this is what I found. This is where those 10 people are. We have... Municipal law enforcement officers, they used to be called the bylaw officers, and because there are so many of them, we need somebody to manage them, so we have a manager of municipal law enforcement, and because they have paperwork to do and other stuff, we now have a full-time administrative assistant, and we have some student work at some time throughout the year. So this is the situation that we now have. I've put this up here because it's very important for people to understand their rights uh, to pro property and, and privacy and we, uh, the, the Citizens for Direct Democracy, actually have a good video on this topic. So what does it cost us? Well, these people must be getting something like $60,000, $64,000 a year. Here is a manager in the manager range and this is a, an administrative assistant. So I think that that whole lot costs us $650,000. Now that sum of money should appear somewhere in this budget accounting, but it does not. This is what actually happens. This is the clerk's office. Here are the salaries and wages and benefits. And look at this, the budget for 2018 has actually gone down by $27,000 even though they got 10 new employees. Well that clearly is a massive massive error. That cannot be. While I'm on this page I'd like you to look at this figure here. In 2017 we spent 148000 on contracted services. It's more than doubled. It's more than doubled. Where is this money going and why do we need all these contracted services? That's, that's by the way. So, here we have it. Ten more people employed. Down goes the cost. Really amazing. So, when we look back, we can see now the difference. This is what we've always been talking about in the Citizens for Direct Democracy. The fact that these huge bureaucracies are automatically inefficient. Here are the seven people who actually do the work and in the former municipalities there was no manager 
There was no a system, and there were very few of these. So if you work through it, you can see that really amalgamation in terms of by law enforcement officers alone, just that small group, has increased in price by probably about 40%. So, obviously the city can't make sense of this, so I'm going to do my best to unravel this sort of accounting spaghetti which has tied us all in a knot and makes people give up on it. Let's have a look. So, I don't give up so easily. Here are the two budgets and I continue to read them. Here on page 56 I get my first clue. The personnel department, which is a different department entirely, it used to have the law enforcement officers in there. Well, they've gone. I don't know where it's multiple homicides or not, but they're certainly gone. And where have they gone to? There's no explanation of where they've gone to, and you don't see this reflected in the budget either. Now this really will blow your mind, because as you go back through 2017, 2016, what number do you find here? You find 11. They had 11 municipal law enforcement officers in 17. But when you see this figure in the 2018, it suddenly dropped to 10. How difficult is it to count people when you're paying them salaries and are standing in front of you? If you use all your fingers, then you know it's 10. And if there's one more, well, that makes 11. It's very, very simple mathematics. So what's our summary? 10 people were added to the clerk's department and 10 people were taken from the personnel department. But one person got lost somewhere, which is extremely careless. Nowhere in the report is any explanation of these three points. Now, the budget from the clerk's department does not actually show this $650,000 increase. And the budget from the personnel department does not actually show $650,000 savings. So this money here, $650,000, is wandering around in the great hyperspace of the city of Kawatha Lakes. Now I'm going to actually start comparing the two budgets. This is the 2017, and the first thing I want you to understand is these things, these entries and the various entries. And that becomes important. You can see the school board support here. And there's the provincial mandated programs here. These are what are called flow through accounts. They are flow through because these sums of money are not, in fact, administered by the city at all. We've done a, a video on this as well. It's a, a, a strategy to make things look very much better than they truly are. So try and remember that the school board is at the top, and these are the personnel costs. This is the staff cost, $52.5 million. So we got flow through, we got this cost here, and the school board support at the top. Now we move on to the 2018 report. Okay, first thing you notice is that the school board support now is item number four. This order of entries on the budget are different in both reports. That is extremely poor reporting. It's essential that you have these things in the same order on all reports so that the councillors can simply look along and compare things easily. Now, you notice something very strange. That 52 million I was talking about, that suddenly changed to 60.6 million. No explanation. There it is. And the actual budget for 2018 is about 63 million. Similarly, the actual contracted expenses have jumped from this figure up to this figure. It's, these are huge increases. On the other hand, the school board, and they have to manage a large budget, as you can see, these two figures have stayed the same. The school boards have managed to keep their schools supplied and teachers paid without any increase over this year. The increases in the city of Arthur Lakes are absolutely colossal. 
and they admit right at the top the largest expenditure for the municipality is personal personnel con uh, costs at this amount. They say it's 29% of the budget. It's only 29% of this budget with all the flow through amounts added in. It is actually much more and I do that calculation now. Now this kind of trickery in budgets is a real problem and the Toronto Star carried this article recently and it's to do with trying to get money back from people who are sort of getting artificial losses and the, the banks actually do this, our banks do this, they create these artificial losses because they keep sort of share transactions with their subsidiaries and of course if you can create losses even when they're real or false it's always a tax advantage. Now in the city of Guata Lakes these figures that keep changing always make things look better than they really are. It's not a tax advantage in that case but it's still very deceiving. So when we look at them I strip out all of these entries here and I rearrange them so they're all in the same form and then I put in all the correct numbers and this is really what you get. So here is the budget 2018, here is the 2017 budget and here is the 2017 budget as it appears in the 2018 budget. There's a great difference here. There's over $8 million difference. These are colossal errors, or I'll come back to what I think is the explanation. Similarly, with the contract services, look at this. The money we spend on getting other people to do our work, that's what it was in the 17 budget. It's gone up to this in the uh, 17 budget as appears in the 18, and that's the actual figure right now. Now I've extracted the top two lines because they are the most important. So how do they get these strange figures? Well what they do is they take this figure, which I think is suspect, and this figure here, and they do the division and they end up with 4.4%. So the city says that the cost of staff, salaries and benefits is only gone up 4.4%, which happens to be about three times the cost of living. In reality, if you start with this figure, and go to this week, it's up to 20.7%. This is the real figure using the actual budgets. And similarly with the contract services, they say, well, actually in 17 it's only 23 million. In the 18 uh, version of that is 31, and now it's only 36. So if you take these two numbers, you get that much. But if you take these two numbers, you get the real figure of 56%. That's an enormous increase in contracted services. Now when you begin to say what's it really cost us, well, we pay for the work done by our staff and we will pay for the work done by the contractors. You add these two together on your other figure which is almost a hundred million dollars. And that's about four thousand dollars for every family. So two-thirds of our taxes go to pay the salaries and benefits of all these people here. Now when you actually do the addition, and I haven't got the complete table here as, as you, because of the problems of identifying the same entries, the difference between them is 24 million dollars. So what they say in the 17 budget and the 18 budget differs by $24 million without a word of explanation. I've put here the actual calculations as how we get these two particular numbers. Again, it's very trivial percentage calculation. So, we go back to this particular chart again. So we, we say to ourselves, why is this set of figures different from this set of figures when they should be the same because they're both the 2017 budget. Now, there are only two possibilities. The first is that this was the budget for 2017 and staff overspent it by 24 million, which is gross mismanagement. And they should all be sacked for that. 
If that isn't true, and these numbers are true, then these numbers are fudged. You can't have it both ways. Either this was a budget which was actually spent, and so this $24,000 is unaccounted for, so these must have been fudged. So it's shocking to know that this administration has the power to tax us as it chooses, then makes these kinds of errors. So the study of money, above all other fields in economics, is one in which complexity is used to disguise truth, or to evade truth, not to reveal it. And this is by John Galbraith, who is an expert in the field, and certainly this is the situation in the city of Kawatha Lakes. So, I don't know what you thought, but uh, even though I did it myself, it still amazes me that these things can go by completely unnoticed by councillors or anybody else who has some authority to get things done properly. Accounting is a very, very simple skill, and I have shown you two major whoppers, probably three. If they can't count the number of staff then they are in serious problems and it is certainly time for a change. So support us, uh, us and our other people who are running in the next election. And if you like this, make sure you do so on the internet and also any support is gratefully received. Thank you.